Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. After a hiatus of a couple of weeks, I have with me Elmer Yuan, and a lot has been happening in China. First, let's welcome our guest of the afternoon, Elmer Yuan. Elmer, Namaskar, and welcome to P Guru's channel. Thank you, Sri, for inviting me again. Thank you. So, Elmer, a lot of CEOs are making a beeline to China. A couple of heads of state have also made a beeline to China. Something is afoot there. What is going on? What is their COVID X? Is COVID still taking place? What is the status there? Kind of enlighten us what's happening inside China. The COVID has caused a tremendous damage to the Chinese economy. Uh, people may not understand the communist system. You see, our system, when you build something, you have capital, right? From your own bank or from your own account, from your own money. It's called right. capital. But under the communist system, in fact, I went to China in 1970s. When they start a business, they don't have any money. All the capital belong to the country. So they have to go to a bank to borrow some money and then invest. I'm talking about everything, everything, because it's not, it's a, a communist country, meaning it's not a capitalist system. Whether we are big or small, we are capitalist, all right? Whether you own a shop, or own anything, you're a capitalist. But in China, uh, in from the 70s to now, fine, you don't really own anything. So when you want to invest something, it's all based on borrowing. Let me give you an example. You fly into Shanghai. The plane, if you fly a Chinese airline, the plane is a borrow item. Like uh, Macron got an order for 160 planes. They have to borrow money to buy those planes. It's not out of capital. And then the airport is on borrowing, still on loan, it's not yet paid off. And then the superhighway, the high speed train, every building is not paid off because people are paying 20 years mortgage or 25 years mortgage. Everything is on loan. There's nothing is uh, owned by anybody. So we have a capitalist system. So when they borrow so much money, first of all, if they can keep on borrowing new money, like a Ponzi scheme, then can use the new money to cover the old money. But unfortunately, this COVID has interrupted their Ponzi scheme. So meaning during that period, they nobody is working, nobody is investing. So the Ponzi scheme is broken. So this is what's happening. The result is this is the debt. Not only they have to pay off the debt, they have to pay interest on time, debt on time, and this is in, there are two sets of money. There's the RMB, huge amount. Total amount of RMB debt internally is 100 trillion RMB. Oh, sorry, 100 trillion, uh, yes, 100 trillion RMB. And outside, easily 5 trillion US dollars, meaning foreign borrowing through Hong Kong. Hong Kong, we know everything. So now they are getting into trouble because first of all, lots of money are pulling out of China because interest rate in US is higher. Politically, China is very, very troublesome. Everybody yes, worry yes. about a war with Taiwan. It can happen next week. Then what do you do? You lend them money, how do you get it back? So money are leaving China because of high interest rate in the States and all, also because of risk, right? Risk of a Taiwan war or a war with India. And can anything can happen. So money are leaving. Export, of course, as you can see, a lot of their uh, factories are moving, their supply chain is moving to India, to Vietnam, to all Southeast Asian country, even partly now to uh, to Mexico, right, where labor is still cheap. So they are leaving. Their, their, their export has dropped by almost like 30% in the month of March. Very, very serious. You know, you know the quantum number. So again, foreign export can earn them money. Now that money is cutting off. So the other thing is they have IPOs, IPO and also can gain them foreign currency, no more. And the Chinese, inside Chinese, it's a gridlock. It's a gridlock because when you owe everybody money, it's very hard to break that gridlock. You have to, again, come up with a huge amount of money and then break that. It's a vicious cycle because you owe me money. It's, it's a multilateral kind of loan system that's entered into a gridlock. So overall in China, let me put it this way, their, their last straw on the camel's back is their debt. 
total debt. The whole country, when, when you see the growth, is based on debt. It's not like America, where you earn money, your capital, you plow back the money, and so on. Everything in China, you don't borrow that much from the bank. In US, the big corporation have their own money, right? And they have a way of raising money, issuing bonds and so forth, very, very mature way, a standardized way of, so they can gain their own money. In, in US, there's no shortage of capital. But in China, they don't have capital. They have debt, and debt you have to pay off. The minute you are not doing well, then the debt is on on time, and the interest and everything crashing down. This is what happened to the property company. I want to give you a typical example of property. The property, as you know, in the last two years, they have problem even paying the interest. All right, you had the Ever uh, Ever Grant, Ever Grant, company, yeah, the most famous company. Take them for example. So in China, basically, the property market is dead. Uh, office. Like all of us, office is like a uh, half, half, fifty percent empty. Same problem as we are. All right, office, office, commercial buildings, shops. People go on buying online. Nobody buys from uh, malls anymore, shopping malls anymore. Residential prices have dropped as much as ha almost half. All right, and no transaction. Nobody has the money to buy. So what really happened is let let me give you an example of this property business. They cannot construct any more new building. Where you cannot construct new building, not only the construction business died. Can you imagine how much steel, cement, aluminium, glass, building material going into this business? And on top of that, you, China makes a lot of furniture, and then the bathroom, all the bathroom stuff made in China, right? The ceramic and then the, the the water water stuff and then the toilet and everything, and then the the kitchen, the entire kitchen set. It's all made in China. Everything stopped when you have construction stop. Everything stopped. Flooring, uh, your your curtain, your wallpaper, your paint, you name it. When the property business go down, this is a huge gigantic. We are talking about one thousand business going down. One thousand not business. One thousand industry going down. So they have all these factories are shutting down internally. All the export also, export all the factories are closed. People are afraid to give them order. Give them order. What if there's a war? Then they have, cannot deliver. Like the COVID zero zero tolerance. So as you can see, just from the construction business or the property business, it's leading into so many problems. The banks, the banks. Loan them so much money, they are in big trouble, and then the local government depends on selling land or right? auctioning off land to to make up the money to do all the infrastructure and the government administration. Suddenly, they have no more income because nobody is buying land anymore. Their land is come from come from uh, you know the the auction off. Every city or every town have the right to auction off the land, and that was why they were so. Building so much infrastructure because they have this money and they can also borrow. All right, banks think, oh, you still have lots of land, but suddenly nobody buys land anymore. So this is a very serious situation in China. I'm only talking about one industry, and there are many, many other industries. All right, everybody is is loaded with debt and with unable to pay off the interest and. The people who lend you money also, because they also owe people. It's a chain reaction. It's a it's a vicious cycle. So what I'm saying is, as of now, the debt in China. I'm talking about overall debt, including government, local government, central government, big companies, even personally. You no, know, personally, it's the the monthly installment buying property. People are not buying one; they buy sometimes two as an investment. It's a total collapse. The debt is the biggest problem. That's the last straw on the camel's back. So what's happening is this is leading to a already happening. They don't report it. Nobody reports it. Or the Wall Street, or they don't want to report it. They want to still talk about the good stories. So they are they have already entered into a depression, not a recession. Please, a depression. This is how serious they are. All right. So you unfortunately, I mean, you don't speak Chinese. You don't have. You don't get their local news. We get a lot of WeChat, all these video TikToks. They have a lot of lot of people looking for a job. No job. Uh, in Samjiang, used to be 
uh, 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 two years ago per hourly wage is about uh, three dollars US, three US dollars. Now it's down to one US dollar. Still cannot wow. find wow. one US. So that in the in the station railway station, there are people going back to the countryside because they cannot even make a living. They have no money to make a living or food. So after they cannot find a job, they just move back to the countryside. This is how bad it is. What is totally different? What you see on newspaper and what is reported by this Wall Street. Those people, all they do, the Wall Street, they kiss the communist ass. Right? That's all they do. They're talking about 5% uh, GDP growth. That's bullshit. They, are, they have a negative GDP growth. They are somewhere around less 20%. You trust me, minus 20% GDP is not positive. And all the, uh, all the Wall Street, of course, they want to make fees. So they are encouraging more people to invest in China so they can get a commission. So they are still talking good. All the investment bankers, all the foreign press are still talking about 5%. Whenever you hear 5%, 5% just walk away. Either he's lying or he's ignorant. Right? I mean, I'm sure lots of Indians. Either one is bad. Huh? Either one is bad. Either one is bad. This is how bad it is. So I want you guys to be, to understand all this business you are taking away from uh, China. There's a consequence. I mean, it's not just happen. It's not superficial. They lose money. The factory shut down because they lost the order. Their suppliers also lost all the orders, and their workers lost their job. This is the consequence. You know, it's not just like oh, it's like a like a football game. You lose and you walk you walk home. It's no. It's a matter of making a living or not making a living. So there are already people are starving because China, there's no such, no welfare. The communist system, they don't believe in welfare. All this COVID, nobody gets compensated for anything. In US, you know, the government really pay a lot of money. A lot of right. pe- places, government try to help out, uh, you know, in salary or in rent and so on. In but India, food in grains. Time. India is giving food grains. Up to exactly. 800 million, 800 million are getting free food grains. Yeah, but no. not in China, all right? Not in the communist yeah. system. So people may have already, are already dying from hunger, from poverty, because in the countryside, it's even worse. No hospital and the local government, the, the, the little countryside government have no money to help, even if they want to, because they are all in red, including Shanghai and Shenzhen, which are the two richest city in China. Last year, they were in red, the government. Uh, uh, revenue is in red. It's really serious. So what I think is happening is they, of course, now try everything, try everything to get people to come come to China, get businessmen to come back to China. They would promise them the sun and the moon and the star. Look what happened. You know, Jack Ma, they promised him everything. Jack Ma said, I wasn't going. Then they give Jack, make a list, make a wish list. And everything Xi Jinping would agree. Just to get, because Jack Ma would be like a, a symbol uh, that right, uh, they right. feel comfortable yeah. with communism. So right they China. are taking yeah. everybody, Elon Musk and then uh, uh, Tim Cook, you name it, invite them all in to try to invest. But those people are not stupid, all right? They will make some gesture and watch and see. This is, all businessmen are like this, all right? They will watch and see. And the economy is dropping. Is really tanking. Let's put it that way. It's really serious. I mean, I I, I know what what, what it, I know what's inside. It's a show. It's the last desperate show. And on the other hand, they have to finance the Russian war with Ukraine, and the Russian war is call, costing a billion dollars, a billion dollars every day. It's a huge amount of money. All right, and Russian is running out. They don't have much money, so all these games about uh, uh, RMB and so on and so forth, these are talks too late. By the time they get the RMB accepted as some kind of trading currency, <laughs> this is talking about two years from now. They're already bankrupted. That's what it is. They are bankrupted. It's a depression, and they are bankrupted. This the debt. Every bankruptcy you can see. Every depression came from debt. All right, whether it's Lehman Brother or whether it's uh, 1929 or the Great Depression, all came from debt. And what happened is when they were doing well, when America was 
pumping them with the money, keep on giving the money. They can do fine. All right. The minute that money stop and going backwards into USA, that's where the Ponzi scheme, Ponzi scheme collapse. I'm sure in India, you know, you know about Indian oh, people yes. and business. Oh yes, this is how a business collapse. Um, Elmer, what is happening to the virus of democracy? Have you infected? How is the infection program coming along? You mean my 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 virus? Your yes. virus of democracy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I'm doing quite well. I just came in from Australia, from Sydney, where there's a lot of Hong Kong Chinese. I travel, and I, I I travel nonstop to all the cities with China, with Hong Kong Chinese and get them to support a Hong Kong Parliament. The basic democracy of a Parliament is election. Everybody has to vote. I'm sure you 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 people know nobody knows better about democracy than the Indian people, right? I mean, yes, you started yes, from yes. Gandhi and so on. Uh, yes. So we are starting a Hong Kong Parliament through election, one man one vote, and all Hong Kong people, whether they live overseas or live in Hong Kong, very very low qualification. Either you're born in Hong Kong or live in Hong Kong for 17 years, and I believe there are a few hundred thousand uh, Indian descendants yes, in Hong Kong. Yeah. Yeah. born or live in Hong Kong more than seven years, and right. they have the right to vote. And also, they are first generation, they are next generation, one generation, their children have the right to vote. So I'm generating a lot of, I'm, I'm lowering the threshold so that more people can vote. And uh, uh, this is not dangerous, you know, this, and when the dictatorship, <laughs> you can't give them too much power. But when you give the power to the people, you don't have to worry because people don't start wars and start nonsense. It's the dictators that start war. So we are very successful. And I have devised a uh, so-called a self-help online mobile voting system, online voting. So basically you can, using a mobile phone and then the camera behind you, you use a, get a QR code and you immediately get online. It will automatically use the mobile phone's camera to check your face with your with your ID cards uh, picture, so that and then the next step you you voice your voting. That's because we're probably we're going to have thirty five uh, uh, candidates. So you you talk about it. You just say either by numbers or their names. And when you're done with it, you erase everything on your phone and also on the website. So there's no trace. Only we the counter remains. The communi- you're dealing people. with communists. Yeah. You're not dealing with the, with the democratic Indian government. You're dealing with Chinese Communist Party. They will trace you and prosecute you. I'm under arrest. You know, I have a, there's a warrant for my arrest in Hong Kong. I can't go to China or anything. And I'm scared to go to Southeast Asia country like Thailand or Laos or Cambodia, where they are very pro-China and I can be adopted. So we, everybody very scared of voting. So we need to have a basically a traceless, a traceless voting system. And I need India's help because India is very, very good with software. And uh, recognition, this is for India, it's a piece of cake. Absolutely, Elmer. Anything we can do to help the cause of democracy, more power to you, or rather I should say more virus to you. Thank you very much, <laughs> Elmer. And, and viewers, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. You know Elmer's Twitter handle, it's at Elmer UN. And my Twitter handle is sriir1. It is at pgurus1 for pgurus. Do follow us on Twitter. And please, please, please don't forget to click on the bell button for notification. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you for inviting me. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sri. Thank you.